So some of you guys have got to stop hanging out with e-girls at these tournaments. Yes, I said the title of the video at the beginning of the video, but let's go ahead and get right into it. So there are four people in this story. You have professional Tekken player Shinblade, who's either the victim or the predator. You have Zuzu, who is Shinblade's girlfriend. You have professional Tekken player Shadow, who is Shinblade's ex-friend. And you have Angel, ex-OnlyFans model turned trucker, who is either the victim or the liar. So at Combo Breaker, which is a tournament that takes place in Chicago this past 2023 May, Shinblade and Shadow are friends upon arrival to this tournament. Shinblade meets Shadow's best friend, also known as Angel, who thought Shinblade was just a regular guy and didn't have any deeper feelings or thoughts upon meeting him. She goes on to describe the tournament as boring, cold, and she would have liked to go home after being there for a while. Shinblade insists for Shadow to join in a side tournament with him, which Shadow was feeling the same as Angel about the tournament of just being over it for the day. However, Shinblade's persistence gets Shadow to join the tournament, after which Shinblade asks Angel if she would like to go drink some alcohol. So on their way to Shinblade's truck, allegedly when alone, Shinblade asks Angel, what have you been on? And telling her that he's seen her Twitter and explaining to her how he likes women that are very open with their sexuality. And she states that during this convo, upon getting the Shinblade's car, she was already thinking that he was a cornball and even going as far to state that she didn't want to get drunk with this man and she wanted to get drunk on her own terms and he was giving off a bad weirdo vibe. We get to his truck. We get to his truck, he get the bottle. I'm thinking, I don't want to get drunk with this man. I'm just get drunk on my own terms because I had a bottle in my car too. So I'm gonna just get drunk, you know, because he already giving those off vibes. You know, you always get a vibe. He states after being in the car with him for a bit, and him drinking alcohol. He was a wolf in sheep's clothing. He began to feel on her chest in the car and he pulled his dick out, which she refers to as several times as a turtleneck and squeezing tip in front of her. Shinblade then supposedly asked her to touch it and even going as far as ask if he can put it in for 10 seconds. After five minutes, she leaves the vehicle and she goes to her car with Shinblade following her. And upon bending over to get her own bottle, apparently Shinblade tries to dry hump her and pull her shorts to the side while stating, even though there are people outside that can potentially see, he doesn't care if they see. Touch on it. I'm like, mm, I'm good. I'm good now. And so, what the f happened? Oh, <laughs> he started begging the f me. He like, can can I please just put it in for 10 seconds? I swear to God, you say you you say you done. I'm gonna pull it out. I'm I'm a I'm a stop. I'm like, mm -mm, I'm I'm good. I'm sure he like, please, just 10 seconds, please. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm good. I'm good. So after about like five minutes of him begging me, I'm like, I'm ready to get out this car because this nigga's strange. He weird. He got a turtleneck. Like I'm I'm just cool. I'm just not feeling it. I'm not with it at all right bad enough this nigga groping me up and shit and i'm just like Egh. so i get out the car he following me go to my car i bend over to get like uh my bottle out the car because i'm about to just do my own thing in my own car you get what i'm saying this man while i'm bending over to get my stuff he started dry humping me and trying to pull my shorts to the side and i'm pushing him back like bro chill he like i don't give a i'm like it's people out here he like i don't give a can watch i'm like no i'm cool i'm cool angel states she isn't traumatized and is relatively desensitized by this entire encounter because of her prior past trauma and her history of being a sex worker but she will mention the interaction to shadow who as she's telling him this it gets visibly angry by this information and shadow emphasizes because shinblade asked her several times to take it further and she said no that sexual assault she also details more information about she didn't know shinblade had a girlfriend who was also at the venue at the time and goes on to say that she thought he was a single cornball who didn't get any pussy shadow upon hearing angel's story then confronts shinblade at the venue about the ordeal which shinblade states that angel is lying which this revelation pisses her off with her going as far as saying she's not the type of bitch to pin allegations on no nigga especially a man that ain't got nothing with her stating several times who are you in her video shimblade lied that's when i got mad because don't lie on me i don't know who you are from a can of paint and i'm not the type of bitch to pin allegations on no nigga and especially a man that ain't got nothing who are you who are you 
for me to lie on. You get what I'm saying? After a couple of months pass, they decide to bring this information to Shinblade's woman, Zuzu, who apparently already knew that they had hung out in the car, but according to Angel, he didn't state the details of their interactions. Also, they're trying to say Shinblade's woman is compromised and brainwashed because she isn't getting on board with the story because something similar in the past has happened to Shinblade with that situation being proved false. Angel then goes on to state in her video that if she wants to be with someone, she will do that, and if she doesn't, she won't. She keeps her past Twitter videos public because that was a part of her story that she's not ashamed of and she doesn't hide anything about herself. If I want to f*** somebody, I'm going to do that. And if I don't, I'm not going to do that. Don't think I'm an easy target because of what I did in my past. I keep that up because that was a part of me. That was a part of my life and I'm not ashamed of it and I don't hide shit about me. And I also don't lie on not shit ass niggas. Okay? Let's talk more about everything surrounding this and we'll get to some of the story discrepancies in my opinion at the end. So this is where stuff gets a little weird because there's a phone call that Shadow is presenting as the big smoking gun in this entire thing where he's trying to get Shinblade to admit to essentially sexual assault over the phone and Shinblade just being apologetic about the entire ordeal while admitting to nothing. However, Shadow's perspective is See, he's dodging the topic, that nigga guilty, while other commenters' stances have been, hey, he didn't really admit to anything here. And if you're wondering how this entire story came to light, let's discuss that now. In a tournament match between Shadow and Shinblade, Shadow beats Shinblade and begins to teabag, which upsets Shinblade and him calling Shadow trash, which then Shadow states, tell the people why I really teabagged you. And then he goes forward to release this information that happened seven or eight months ago on Twitter. By them doing this, they're essentially trying to get him removed from future tournaments, killing his ability to make money from playing video games or traveling slash being a part of a community. Shinblade has responded to this entire thing in a video on Twitter, saying he will be searching for legal counsel to handle this while maintaining his innocence. It's been brought to my attention that these false allegations are being spread about me. We will be going a legal route. We already have a lawyer on standby for this. For anyone who's believing any of these lies, you got the right to believe them, but do not bring them to us my way. I will continue to do my content. I will continue to stream. My name, my brand, and my organization is being defamed. Again, I'm going the legal route. They will be dealt with. This is the only time I'm going to speak on this matter. Either you're going to still rock with me or you're not. If I decide to make a statement, it will be under the guidance of my lawyer about this issue. That's all I have. Have a good day. And Zuzu, Shinblade's girlfriend, has been very vocal via social media with tweets of her own discussing the entire matter. While Shadow and Angel have created a four hour Twitter space discussing the entire thing with clips like this surfacing from it. Did, did I not just answer it? No, you didn't answer the question. You told me to go look, look at it. I'm going to answer the question. Hold on. Just answer the question. I'm asking the question. I'll tell you. Cut his mic now. Oh, this so person. Fuck, am I talking Spanish? I mean, I don't understand what you're getting disrespectful about. Cut I'm his a, mic. Why, is this, why do I still hear this man? Hey, look. Cut I'll it. Tell, I'm going to give you the answer, right? You guys know what time it is. It's my favorite part. It's future Rob going back to the past to throw in an edit. I forgot to mention this as well. At no point in May did these people go to the police. This came out eight months later due to a match. Nobody has talked to the police, but something as serious as sexual assault is being thrown around like it's nothing. I just forgot to mention that during the video as I was thinking all this other stuff. So I'm gonna put it here. Let's get back to the vid. I myself currently am watching the Twitter space. I'm about an hour and some change into it and I'm going to finish the rest of it probably after I put this video up but there more than likely won't be an update on the other two and a half hours of footage from that that I'm going to listen to on my own time. But let's get to some of the story discrepancies. Let's get to the yapping. Let's get to my thoughts now, right? Whenever I hear stories where it's a man's word versus a woman's word and it seems to be some interaction took place between the two. The first thing I do is I call up, <laughs> I call up women and I start explaining these stories to them to get their perspective. I just got off the phone with one about 20, 30 minutes ago and we were discussing this and we both kind of came to this conclusion about the entire thing. The first big thing I'm thinking about when I heard this is when women aren't into you or if they were somewhat into you, but they're completely turned off by you now, 
they will act and put forth the message that they were never into you. So it's like if they were really on your dick or if they was really feeling you and then they not feeling you anymore, they act as if they were never feeling you, right? Because who's hanging out with someone one-on-one -on -one in a car of all things that there's not some slight chemistry there even if the guy's fumbling and saying stuff that's slightly making you think like oh this dude's a cornball that's the first thing all right so the second thing is this right there is a progression that happens in the vehicle like you just telling me he's sitting in the car and he just having to be feeling your breasts a nigga is not sitting in the car and just grabbing a tit and then pulling his dick out like surprise one surprise two so uh, it's what conversation is being had that could even progress to all right now i'm feeling on your titty now i pull the dick out yo why don't you go ahead and touch it ma stop playing quit playing man come on man man come on stop playing ma and then the nigga like ah man just let me just stick it in let me just feel the warmth i ain't gonna move i ain't gonna stroke nothing i just want to feel the heat coming off of it i know you got that heat like what is happening there is a slow progression even the alcohol because when you listen to the story you would assume that the niggas being a weirdo out of the car he gets in the car within two minutes of him being in the car the nigga already drunk and already doing weirdo stuff within two minutes and she out the car in seven minutes and then within by by minute seven he like come on let me just come on let me just hump it let me just hump it let me just feel it. man them niggas over there ain't watching come on let me just stroke it one time like just keep it a beam man it's almost like people want you to look at their scenario or their situation and say hey forget all your life experience from friends from anything you've dealt with and just believe and i'm not saying i'm not capable of belief but you gotta give me something so you want to tell me there was no sexual because it from what it sounds like when you listen to everything i detailed in the story and i'm going to archive her video and the phone call so if you want to go watch it yourself and listen to it you can but from what it sounds like to me everything is just this one-sided extreme lust sexual beast that is shin blade. There isn't anything happening at all. There's no conversation that could be happening that could make the niggas say like, yo, can I touch your titty? You can go ahead and touch it. There's nothing that you said that would make a boob get finessed, that would make a dick get pulled out, that the convo's so good, the nigga sitting there dick on 10, like, yo, this this shit got so much blood in it. If I don't bust now, I'ma die. If, if this don't bust in my drawer, something gonna bust in my brain. <laughs> And I know, Rob, there Rob go, victim blaming again. There that incel coming up out of Rob again. I'm just asking, be fucking for real. That I, 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 I'm trying to curse less, but be for real, dog, for real. Seriously, I, I want y'all to be for real. There's a progression that happens. There's a progression like if you Netflix and chill with a chick. She got in the car. She wasn't doing anything but having good conversation, talking about how much money she's making via trucking across the United States while this nigga just grabs on her breast. He takes a sip of the alcohol. Good combo, good combo. She looks over. His dick is out his drawers. Good combo, good combo. He looking at her. Oh, he just happened to ask her to touch it. Good combo, good combo. Now he just saying like, yo, so let me just stick it in. Yo, let's let's just be serious. Let's seriously be serious. SBS, seriously be serious. So I'm gonna tell you my working theory. This is what me and I was talking to a female friend. This is kind of like what we came to the conclusion of. When you watch this video and you can go back and watch her 10 minute video yourself, she mentions the way this nigga's dick looks, I wanna say about five times, maybe even more. But it was, it was definitely more than twice and it was under seven. So I would say probably like five, six times she mentions the way this nigga's dick looks i'm gonna keep it a bean i think they were having good convo convo was heading into that sexual nature direction there wasn't a problem with the boobs being touched the problem was with how this nigga's dick looked and she ain't messing with no turtleneck no uncircumcised dicks i, I hate to paint her in that nature but i'm really trying to think what it could be because it's either that or this nigga is the big sexual demon lust monster on the planet in the community and what we know is a lot of behavior has a tendency to repeat itself. I don't know what the, when the allegations that were proven false, they said he had other allegations of two other women against him that they disproved and those ladies were lying, right? But what we've seen with a lot of these communities in the past, when you have deviants in them running rampant, it's not something that they do just once. Like it's a behavior that is reoccurring it's like a, a serial killer. He going, it's going to flare up and he going to get it off in some way, shape or form. 
So that's the big one that I'm like sitting there and I'm listening to it and I'm just like, all right, you thought he was a cornball, but you gonna drink with him. You weren't, you weren't attracted to the nigga, but the nigga asked you one on one, like, yo, let's go drink some liquor, and you just with it. Let's keep it a bean. If Humpty Dumpty go ask Princess Peach if she wants smoke, hey, you wanna hit the tree? You know I got the hen dog in the back. What's up, Peach? I think Princess Peach is gonna walk past Humpty Dumpty and keep it pushing, and him Humpty Dumpty gonna be hitting that tree and hitting that liquor on his lonesome that night. I don't think he gonna have Peach on the side thing, like, hey, so what you finna do, Peach? Yeah, I, I know, man. Hey, you know Mario ain't been around yeah that's real yeah yeah that's real messed up so what's up i don't think that's what he won't know what that interaction is about that evening also the third note i gotta mention i think may have been something that pissed her off was she thought the nigga didn't have a girl he probably didn't mention it because he thinking like oh she with it she she ain't the type to expose i'm gonna see what's up i think that's another thing as well because when you see his woman on twitter and i mean she's the one really go look at some of her tweets i'm gonna have all that link she been on her megan good she been on her coretta scott king her michelle obama she's standing unshaken by her man which i ain't even gonna lie i'm gonna keep it a bean i'm surprised she didn't look at him and say like hey why are you in the car with a with another chick because like, i when i mentioned that to to my friend that was the first she's like wait he was in another car another with another chick and his girl was there and that was eyebrow raising right so it was like we were going back and forth and some things i'm like yeah i don't know like even i i don't understand that but hey the dynamic of the relationship might be different where stuff like that she she's very trusting to him i can't i can't really speak to that but definitely one thing i know for a fact is when if they slightly feel you i'm not gonna sit here and play angel out and say she was she was head over heels for shin blade i ain't gonna play her out and say that but she might the whole oh he just a regular guy i didn't see 20 goofies like him every day i ain't gonna say that either she might have seen him like oh he all right like he kind of he looked cool but when you isolate yourself with with another person it's just one-on-one -on -one, it's just y'all time i just don't think the dude is going on a hundred like that unless there's some type of energy that is allowing that conversation to continue so that's my thoughts on the entire thing man i'm gonna keep saying this i'm gonna say this the stench of being a creep or an allegation of like that on your name, it is hard to break, it is hard to shake. Brothers have to move smarter. I think there's a lesson here to be learned, whether how this goes, right? I'm just giving my opinion on it, but you guys might see something different from the video that I just created here. But I think if you're hanging out one-on-one, -on -one, you need to have a visible witness to what is happening because when it's his word versus her word, I won't be surprised if Shinblade isn't allowed to compete in certain tournaments or he might have to take some time off as he's trying to get this situated to clear his name. All because of an interaction that took place about six to seven months ago. But I don't know, man. That's just my thoughts. I wanted to make this. This is kind of like a primer because I know we talked about the academics thing yesterday. This is way smaller. I Y'all know I love fighting games and I follow the fighting game community for the last about 10 years at least. So this is something currently happening in it. I wanted to give my thoughts. I love to read your opinions down in the comment section below. Am I right? Am I wrong? I look forward to reading it. Whatever. You guys have a great day and I'll talk to y'all tomorrow.